Wrong road. Thomas's branch line is important, and so is Edward's. They both bring in valuable traffic, but their track and bridges are not so strong as those on the main. That is why the Fat Controller does not allow the heavier mainline engines such as Gordon and Henry to run on them. If, however, you had heard Gordon talking to Edward a short while ago, you would have thought that the Fat Controller had forbidden him to run on the branch lines for quite another reason. <sighs> it's not fair, grumbled Gordon. What isn't fair? asked Edward. Letting branch line diesels pull mainline trains. <clears throat> Never mind, Gordon. I'm sure Boko will let you pull his truck sometimes. That would make it quite fair. <clears throat> Gordon spluttered furiously. <clears throat> I won't pull Boko's dirty trucks. I won't run on branch lines. Why not? It would be a nice change. The fat controller would never approve, said Gordon loftily. Branch lines are vulgar. He puffed away in a dignified manner. Edward chuckled and followed him to the station. Every evening, two fast trains leave the big station within five minutes. The 625 is Gordon's for the main line. Edward's at 6.30 runs along the branch. Gordon, his driver, and his fireman all say it was the lady's fault. She wore a green floppy hat and was saying goodbye to a friend sitting in the coach nearest the guard's van. It was almost time to start. The fireman looked back. He was new to the job. He couldn't see the guard, but he did see something green waving. He thought it was the flag. Right away, mate, he called. But the guard had not waved his flag. When Gordon started, he left some luggage, several indignant passengers, and the guard all standing on the platform. To make matters worse, by the time Gordon had been brought back, Edward's train was overdue. Oh, you've missed your path, Gordon, said the fat controller crossly. Now we must clear Edward's train before you can start. This should have put everything right with the least possible trouble. But control at the big station made things worse. They forgot to warn the signalman at Edward's junction about the change of plan. It was dark by the time the trains reached the junction. And you can guess what happened. Edward went through on the main. Gordon was switched to the branch. It took the fat controller several hours to sort out the tangle and pacify the passengers. In the end, Gordon was left with his fire drawn, cold and cross, on one of Edward's sidings, near the harbour. Bill and Ben peeped into the yard next morning. They wondered if Boko had brought them some trucks. There were no trucks, but they didn't mind that. Teasing Gordon, they thought, would be much better fun. What's that? asked Bill loudly. Shh, whispered Ben. It's Gordon. It looks like Gordon, but it can't be. Gordon never comes on branch lines. He thinks them vulgar. Gordon pretended he hadn't heard. If it isn't Gordon, said Ben, it's just a pile of old iron which we'd better take to the scrapyard. No, Bill, this lot's useless for scrap. We'll take it to the harbour and dump it in the sea. Gordon was alarmed. I am Gordon. Stop, stop. The twins paid no attention. Gordon shut his eyes and prepared for the worst. The twins argued loudly and long. Bill favoured the scrapyard, while Ben said that the cutting up in such places was something cruel. It would be kinder, he urged, to give these remains a quick end in the sea. Besides, he went on, they would make a lovely splash. <laughs> Gordon could not view either prospect with any enthusiasm. Up to that time, he had disapproved of diesels. They were, he considered, ugly, smelly and noisy. But when he opened his eyes and saw Boko coming into the yard, he thought him the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. Boko, my dear engine, he gasped, save me. 
Voco quickly sized up the situation and sent Bill and Ben about their business. They were cheeky at first, but Voco threatened to take away the trucks of coal he had brought for them. That made them behave at once. Gordon thought he was wonderful. Oh, those little demons, he said. How do you do it? Ah, well, said Boko. It's just a neck. Gordon thinks to this day that Boko saved his life. But we know the twins were only teasing, don't we? <laughs> <laughs>